Jeremiah chapter 31 from verse 11. Let's start. Praise God. Okay. Jeremiah 31. My brother wanted me to wear waistcoat. He came with the waistcoat, but I've never worn it. I want me to wear waistcoat. I don't want to wear waistcoat today. I don't feel like wearing a shirt today. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a younger person. They, 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 you know, they like all this, um, all this uh, worldly, uh, <laughs> all these worldly things. Hallelujah. Uh, I, um, honestly, there are many things, if I'm God, that I will remove for humanity so that everybody's life will be simple. Like, I will remove hair. So, what are you doing, Baba? Wig. Remove so that your life will be simple. Uh, you, your head will just be like... Uh, and the poor. All you need is good olive oil. You just, you'll be moving. Okay, let's go. And then I will make the whole world one sex. One gender. All the, I don't know whether it's going to be men or women. So the, all this will have a lot of uh, heartbreaks. Divorce will not be there. Say, how we multiply? I, I will just say, 2021, I will drop 100, 100 million. <laughs> I just drop, they just find children. We say two everywhere. <laughs> 2022, I will drop another. <laughs> That's how we populate. I don't want, uh, honestly, say yeah, he toasted me, he broke my heart. That will be, nobody will have evil, evil thought towards another person. Everybody will just be the same. That's how we just organize the world. Everything will be okay. Hallelujah. When you are 21, whether you go to school or not, you will graduate. Okay. <laughs> let's, okay, uh, okay, let's leave. Uh, okay, it's all right, it's all right. Let's go. I started my I started my crazy ideas, okay? I don't let, let, let me keep my idea to myself. Let's go. <laughs> you know, and if you are wicked, I will call you home before you are 30. Okay. That'll be the punishment for wicked people. They will just be gone and say you just die. You know the way <laughs> you know it's really that thing that people need to fall sick to die. If you see how God kills people, they don't need to fall sick. Moses was just going. God said, Come over. He said, you will die today. That's all. The Bible says, come, come over to the mountain. God said, take a look at the promised land. You will not see it. And the Bible says, die. <laughs> and the Bible says, up to today, nobody knew where God buried him. God quickly buried him. God injured him. buried him. Everybody look to today. They know where they buried him. Aaron died like a few months before he died. He said, Aaron, because for God, God knew that as long as Aaron had that anointing, Aaron would not die. God told him, yeah, remove your clothes, the high priestly clothes, because anointing protects. Anointing protects. That is why David will do something wrong. The people will die. He that did something wrong will not die. Because God has said, touch no more, my anointed. If God would help not to touch the anointed, he himself will not touch the anointed. There's something about an anointing that protects and saves. So God, told, you know what? That's your garment. That also, he removed it. As far as he removed it, God said, it's time. Death can touch him now. Do you get what we're trying to say now? So now you learn something. Let's go back. Okay. For the Lord has redeemed what? Jacob. And ransomed him for the hand of the one stronger than him. Say amen to that. Amen. Satan used to be stronger than humanity. But God has rescued her from his hand. Hallelujah. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, streaming online <laughs> to the goodness or what of the Lord. For wheat and new wine and oil. May you enjoy them all. Amen. For the young of the flock and the herd, their soul shall be like a well watered garden. May you be heavy in your souls. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Where was that garden? And they shall sorrow no more at all. Awesome. Verse 13. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance. Talking about those spirits are being reborn. Okay? And the young men and old together. For I will turn their money to joy. Amen. I will comfort them. And make them rejoice rather than what? Amen. Sorrow. I will satiate the soul of the priests. Don't forget, God, through Christ Jesus, has made us kingdom of kings and priests. For we are royal priesthoods. 
So he says, I will make what? The soul of the priest, you and me, with what? I will satiate their soul with what? Abundance. Look at the next line. And my people shall be satisfied. What? By what? With my goodness, says the Lord. May you be satisfied Amen. with the goodness of God. Amen. That's where I got the title from. Satisfied with the goodness. Say, my people shall be satisfied with the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 65, verse 1. Psalm 60, 65, verse 1. Praise is awaiting, is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. Don't forget, when they were redeemed, God brought them to Zion, right? Where we read just now. And to you, the vow shall be performed. Oh, you who hear prayer, to you shall all what? All flesh come. Verse 3. Iniquities prevailed against me. As for our transgressions, what? You will provide what? Atonement for them. Just like we are we read now. Okay? Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach to you. That he may dwell what? In your cause. Look at the next line. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of the house of God. Amen. Satisfaction with his goodness. Glory be to God forevermore. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. When you come to a church, you read the Bible. Acts 10, 38. It says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, or Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. Who went about doing what? Doing what? Good. And healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The sign that God is in your life is that when Christ comes to your life, it goes to your life to do good. It comes to your neighborhood to do good. He invades your family to do good, not to cause trouble, to do good. It's the enemy that came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He came that we might have life and have it what? More abundantly. Say with me, Jesus Christ is in my life and is doing me good right now. Hallelujah. The presence of Jesus in your life is to do you good. And when people are looking for the evidence of the goodness of God, may they see it in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we began by just a way of little review. We began by talking about ways that God brings people to uh, way that God uh, uses or to bring people into repentance, right? We mentioned that sometimes God can bring people to repentance through uh, judgment. You know, because the Bible says, I think Isaiah chapter 26, verses 9 and 10, that when the judgments of God are upon the earth, the inhabitants of the earth will learn righteousness. We also talked about um, another way that God brings people to repentance, to embrace him, is through what I call strong prophetic preaching. Like the one that Jonah did in Nineveh and they all turned to the Lord. I could show you other examples in the New Testament, but I don't want to go there. Remember one guy that was trying to hold the consul, proconsul of a particular city, from listening to Paul. And Paul told, looked at him and said, oh, you son of, 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 of the devil, a pervert man. He said, he, said, he said, you'll be blind for a season. And when blindness came over him, the man repented and all that stuff. So, you know, sometimes through some prophetic teaching or preaching, things, uh, people can embrace God. I, I thought I also mentioned that sometimes we can embrace God or God, God brings us the penalty through discipline. Did I mention that? I didn't mention that, Abby. Okay, I've mentioned it now. I won't teach it. Mentioned. True discipline. Okay? Don't worry. One day I have time. I don't want to go into that because one day I have time. Because sometimes uh, when we talk about God's discipline, please, I, I want to beg you. Maybe next Sunday or next time I will take time to teach it. Because sometimes when we throw some concepts in the air, some people mis misunderstand it. I had a, 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 a running argument with somebody one time. He had an accident and he broke his leg. He broke his leg. I mean, he really broke his leg. Not that... Not, not fracture, I don't know, uh, Dr. Seko will help me out. Uh, maybe there's a difference between fracture and break, you know. This one didn't, didn't fracture, he break. <laughs> okay. I mean, not that I break, oh. 
he broke off. Uh, he, br- he break, he break, he detach. He, he come out. Sorry, you know. Yeah. So he, he, he had to have a, a, a prosthetic, what they call it. Uh, so and um, and the guy said, it is God that did it. That God, no, uh, yeah. I said, then your daddy must be better than God. That's what I told him. I said, your father must be better than God. That your daddy is better than God. So why will I say that? I said, your daddy behaves better than God. Your daddy should teach God. Your daddy should take God to a school and instruct him how to deal with children. He said, what do I mean? I said, did you steal when you were a kid? Did you take it on? Did you behave badly? And your daddy took that your right hand and chopped it off to teach you a lesson. If your father, a wicked man, will not do that, you think you're heavenly father. That's the way we teach you. That's not God. So one day, so some of you that, because you lost your car, say, I know I will lose that car. Because when I got that car, my pride was too much. <laughs> See, you will serve yourself into the hand of Satan. I knew that baby was going to die because since she gave her to that baby, she doesn't have time for God at all. So God decided to get attention by taking that baby. You, 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 you must be joking. Yeah. What, what taught you that? Because you didn't have God, that's why you became broke. No, let me tell you something. Kai, now you have, you want, you have derailed me. Now I didn't want to talk about this. Listen. Eh? You think God doesn't know what you will do from beginning of your life to the end. He knows all. Eh? Sometimes, eh, God, what God does is that he shows you to you. So you will now use yourself to judge. It's not, it's not that God he knows what you are going to do. So, so it's not God is not withholding. No. It's, you, some of you are saying, look, don't worry, God. If I get money, I will serve you. I will be humble. God will give you that money. There are some of you from the day you have that money. All of us, we are in trouble. Somebody toss out to you, bring three policemen, they will arrest only one person. Say, lock him up, you will arrest him on Friday so they won't get blamed. So until Monday. Pastor will call you, hey, Pastor, some of your members need to be disciplined. I know you are trying your baby, they are not listening. As if you are listening. <laughs> then you will put them in jail. And then we'll, they, when they come out on Friday, on, on Monday or Tuesday, and everything. And then, Maybe you now became broke thereafter. You said God took the money because of what you did. God didn't take the money because of what you did. What God has just showed you has revealed to you who you are. Because everybody can claim to be humble. Anybody can claim to be committed. But God will give you that opportunity to see whether you will do what you say you will do. And when you have done it, you will now know yourself. That you, yourself you, you will now score yourself by yourself. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say right now? So God does not say no, no, no. He knows already now. Bible says God does this so that the whole world may be silent before him. Glory be to God forevermore. And sometimes the way God disciplines people is not by what you think. Oh, oh, Kai, you have taken me to this thing now. I don't want to go into it at all. Because I have where I'm going today. Look, one of the, one of the ways, eh, sometimes God will discipline by his word. I will show you. Because you don't know, someone, what Bible says his word is like a rod. You say, you say that I rod and I stab. They do what? They comfort me. God uses his word like rod to comfort you, to direct you. Not to kill you, to direct you. There's something you want to do, but when you come to church, something will be said that will bring correction in that area. That is rod correcting you and disciplining you. But also, God does some, something also. Hmm? If God knows that something will cost you your destiny, not just a mistake, a destiny, God will stand on your way. You don't forget he said, I am the one that opens and no man shuts. I am the one that also shuts and no one opens. So both shutting and opening, God does both. If God knows that if this door opens for you, your soul might go. He will keep that door shut. Kai, see where God is quiet now. I'm telling you, may God not open a door that will kill you. After, it's one prayer I pray every day. I say, God, you know me. If you are going to open any door that will become a problem for me, God, I beg you, close it. Don't open it up. I want to go to the nations of the world. Are you ready? 
Is it not from there you will meet, meet Angelina? I begin to sing. Angelina, Angelina, what you love? I hear it. If you don't have antidote for vomiting or vomiting drug, don't go and eat cockroach. Some of the open doors some of you are praying for, you are not strong enough for it to. Let me go. Thank you. <laughs> that lonely voice in the wilderness. God bless you. <laughs> They're not ready. See you that a little rebuke can set you off against anybody. You now have money to back it up. You say, now God, I will save you, save humanity from your hand. So sometimes God himself will st- stand on your way. So that is why you will fast and pray. The door will not open. Because God knows your heart. Say, God, who knows the heart of all men? Wow. Amen. Amen. You know some things. Do you know why Joseph, he didn't have all those dreams. God just told him, he just saw a dream. They were in the field. They gathered sheep. All of a sudden, the sheep was standing. They were back down to a sheep. God didn't show him they will throw him to the, to the pit. Oh. God didn't show him Potiphar's house, so he'll be a slave. Oh. God didn't show him prison. Oh. He just said he will stand and be worshipping him. God knows that if he leads his father's house to that throne, everybody will be in trouble. God took him through a, 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 a process that took away wickedness from him. So by the time he got to the throne, when he saw people that offended him, his heart had been softened. When he saw them, he said, you meant it for evil. But God has turned it for good. He now understood. He said, God sent me here. You are not the one that sent me here. God sent me here that may preserve life. In the process of suffering, he discovered purpose. And once you know purpose, you are more solid in your... There are a lot of men who don't know who they are. They are always trying to define who they are. You know my shoe, see my socks, see my uh, watches. If you see a man talking like that, he doesn't know who he is. He still defines himself by the car he drives. He does he still defines himself by television that he has. Not, not a vision, but a celebration. Forget it. He doesn't know who he is. When you are, my sister, when you are dating a man, I know he texts you, oh, that's your bag is Gucci. A man knows Gucci. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a fake man. But the man is telling you, Kai, you know this watch, there are three series in the whole world. What is series in the whole world? A man. I'm serious. So. You should be more solid than that. By the time you discover purpose, it doesn't matter again. Whether you sold me, whether you collected money, whether you lied that I was dead, it, matter, it doesn't matter again. God has worked it out for me. I've discovered purpose. I've been disciplined by God. God has chastised me by himself. He said, no, no, no. They said their father, they said, their, our father said, before he died, that please don't take vengeance. I said, don't forget about what my father said. Even me, I will not take vengeance. I know my purpose. I came here to preserve life. Glory be to God forevermore. May you discover purpose. That is weak. I said, may you discover purpose. May God cause you to forget the bitterness of the past. May God cause you to forget the pain of the past. May those who sack you, may they regret it. May those who betray you, may they regret it. May the Lord walk through the betrayer and fulfill his purpose in your life. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, may God turn around for your good. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you must understand, even in God's discipline, there is mercy. Yeah. Even in the discipline, there is purpose being worked out. God doesn't just inflict pain for the purpose of pain. He wants to achieve something. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you know before, before you started squatting, all you wanted was your own space. You love your space. Because when you were father's house, you had your own space. You had your space all your life. But right now, you are squatting. There are three of you in the room. Now, your heart has been enlarged. You can accommodate people now. Yeah. Yeah. You, learn to, you now learn to wake up. People can now touch your cup without you freaking out. So if somebody touches your print, you will freak out. Who touched my cup? Who touched my spoon? Oh, in this house, people don't maintain their own space. How can you touch my spoon? Oh, this spoon has coronavirus now. You have to- 
over a spoon. You will bring down the roof. If you are like that. Shame on you. Nobody, if somebody moves your shoe, you will, you will be ready to turn down everybody. Right now, because you are living with people, you will be looking for your shoe. Yeah. To find your shoe. You are being tempered. Now, when you get to your own place, you can handle people now. You can now understand. That's why the Bible says, Christ learned obedience by the things he suffered. Not that he was disobedient, but being in that realm, he wouldn't understand what we feel. The suffering was to become humanity. So it can now lead, it, when you say you are tempted, he understands. When you do what you do, he understands. He must be a faithful high priest. That was why. There was no way, I told you before in this church, there was no anointing. There was no encounter that Moses could have that would make him become the high priest. He could never become a high priest. He could have more anointing than, than, than Aaron. He could, he could have met God. He could have more knowledge of God. He could have spoken to God face to face. But God would never allow him to be a high priest. You know why? He, was, he didn't suffer with the people. He was in the palace when they were suffering. The next time he killed somebody, he took off. He ran. He never suffered with the people. So but when the suffering lasted, Aaron was with them. So when it was time for God to get a high priest that could identify with the people, he chose somebody that was from the people. Do you get what I'm saying right now? That is why Christ must become humanity for him to become a faithful high priest. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Let me tell you something. Look at where God has brought you from. God has sent you back there. If you have suffered hunger before, you will understand what it means to be hungry. If you have been sick before, you will understand what it means to heal the sick. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? May your suffering not go for nothing. In this suffering you are going through, may testimony come out of it in the name of Jesus. May your hand become a healing hand. May your voice become a healing voice. May your pocket become a healing pocket. May your bank account become a healing account. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Through you. May humanity enjoy succor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? Like I was telling somebody during the week. Somebody said, Kai, I'm hungry. I've not eaten. He was talking to the son of a millionaire. The one asked him, what do you mean that you have not eaten? He said that what you like to eat is not available. All supermarket did not open. All that your ATM was blocked. I don't understand you have not eaten. He doesn't understand that we can get to a point. Not that we don't want to eat. There is nothing to eat. If you have not been there, this man has been there. Where there was, I've been hungry before that I broke my friend's cupboard. Deji, stupid boy. There are all of us who are in the house. You know these are boys. We could get hungry. He went and locked up the food in the cupboard. But I made my way there. One day I was so hungry, but I decided to wash. As I was washing, I was filling paper. Inside the clothes, I opened it. Behold, it was money. I abandoned the clothes. Some of you look at me. When I announce people's, uh, somebody is selling uh, uh, meat, uh, shop meat, or what they call it, small shops, somebody is selling pop off, somebody is doing art, all those things, and I promote it, everything. I know what it means. I know exactly what it means. For you to have vision in your heart, I don't have what it takes to, to accomplish it. I know what it means for family to gather and you feel to show up at the family meeting because you don't know what to tell them when they ask you, how, how far today? Because there's no, it's not far at all. I know what it means. Some of you find it very difficult to accommodate people in your house. Believe me. I can accommodate people from here to that room. All of you. I've told you the most precious thing to me is study. I don't care. The rest, sleep. Let us just find a place. The only thing I don't like, make sure your shoe is clean. Because of when they remove their shoe here. Angels will leave. Angel will just say, excuse me, please, I will come back. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. You have made me to talk this morning, right? That's not why I came at all. Talking about God's discipline. 
Maybe we'll just, should we just talk about that and leave today? Kai, I will come for something else now and everything. I remember one guy that got so angry with me. He said he doesn't understand it. That if I we come to church, we announce a topic, then we announce something else. He said that's how God led him. He said, ah, do you think God led him to write that topic? <laughs> if somebody asked me, what did you tell him? Tell her. If I told you what I told her, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Let me just talk about that, Kai. We'll talk about the what I came next time. Let's go. Time is my time is remaining five minutes, so you won't believe it. Okay. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Let's talk. Ah. Yeah. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Okay, I felt like opening Bible. You know that you know, I think we did it last time in the okay. <laughs> Oh, no. Glory be to God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, let's start from verse 5. Or, let me show you something from Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Let me just quickly show you something. I'll read 18 and I'll read 24. Look at what it says. Here. Let's go to 18 and read verse 24. Let's read verse 18 first. Who is there? Okay. Look at what it says here. Poverty and what? And shame. will come to him who disdains what? Correction. Did you see that? Anybody that God wants to correct and he hates it. The Bible says what will be belong to that person? Poverty and shame. Say God forbid. Poverty and shame will not be your portion. God wants your life glorious. He says poverty and shame will come to, uh, will come to him who disdains correction. But he who regards what a rebuke word will be honor. Wow. Go to verse 24. Verse 24, please. He who spears what? His rod. Does what? Hates his son. But he who loves him will what? what? With discipline what? Promptly. Do you believe that God loves you? Yes, yes, yes. No, no. Do you believe that God loves you? Yes. He will discipline you what? Promptly. Wow. Discipline is a sign of love. Never forget that. All of you mommies here, all of you daddies here, eh? that because your children cry or cry, which one's correct? Your children cry, a child cries. Children cry. No, there are many now. This one cry, this one cry, this one cry, this one cry. Children cry. A child cry. If you write that in the exam, you have seen your result too. You have seen your result already. Because some of you say it's true. Children cry. A child cry. It's not true. It's a child that cries. Children. <laughs> Somebody nearly believe it, you know. It's true. It makes sense. English grammar doesn't make sense. Let's go. We just follow them. That's what they told us to say. We just say it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So all of you, eh? because your child cries and your children cry, and then you go and you slap a house help. I don't know what to tell you. Honestly, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Nothing mothers. I don't know what to tell you. A child must cry. You now go and slap a heart help. Bah! Why is that baby crying? You have not find out why the baby is crying. You will slap first. I know some of these house help can be wicked because you are wicked to them. Yes, now when you, everybody will eat, they, will, they cannot eat. When everybody has finished, they will not gather remnant and give to them. They will slap your children. You are wicked. Thank you for that offering. It came at the right time. In fact, I will personally collect this and put it in my pocket. It's a good offering at this time. That everybody wants to stone me and you gave offering at this time. Yeah. You are a man of God. Yeah. <laughs> Those of you that refuse to dismiss your children, you hate them. Yeah. And give it time. Yeah. You will have a habit that you will hate. Yeah. 
You get what I'm trying to say? There is nothing wrong in discipline. Knock works. There are many things that work. Are you hearing me? Are you, samba works. Are you hearing me? Even eyes work. You know the way we use eye to. <laughs> you just look at it and say, You. Hey, yeah, yeah. And then there's even, no foot works. You know that's how you will pin your child's feet. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want everybody be always smiling. But your leg is on his toes. <laughs> that, you know what? <laughs> you are. <laughs> we are fine. Hey, yeah, yeah. He will know. Go and buy iPhone 12 for a 12 year old boy. So, what will you use when it's 14? <laughs> iPhone 14. <laughs> No, no, no. You don't display wealth that way. Yeah. That's how to display money. It's, you, know, you know your case like somebody that says, I'm so rich, you now order for a bag of salt. <laughs> so I want to enjoy my money. So give me a bag of salt. It will kill you. There is a way to enjoy money. Not by eating salt. Kai. That is deep, right? It's traditional sense. It's not Bible. Just traditional. Native intelligence. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because God loves you, He will discipline you. Yeah. Hebrew chapter 12. Let me talk about that today and we go. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 5. Hey, hey, I love this. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. He says, my son, do not despise what's the chastening of the Lord. Not be discouraged when you are what? Rebuked by him. Now, I want to give you a little background. Okay. Can I have up to five people? Yeah, you, you, you. You, you. No, or let's start from here. You, 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 you. Yeah. You sit. Ugalicious. Sonu. Yeah. Uh, this is what my brother was telling me yesterday. That shoes, uh, that men's trousers don't reach grand again. It's like this. <laughs> I said, me at my age, I will now wear. <laughs> lie, lie. He will see my trousers. In fact, he saw one trousers, I wanted to be a poet. He shouted. Because the thing, the thing is about almost 18. He shouted. I said, what is wrong with me? Right, let's go. <laughs> But I've been warning him about holiness. Let's go. <laughs> this is book of Hebrew, right? Yeah. He wrote to Hebrews. I'm going somewhere with this. He says, and you, talking to the Hebrew that he wrote to, he says, he says you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Next verse. Next verse, 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 verse. For whom the Lord loves, he does what? He chastens. And scourges every song whom what he, re he receives. I want to ask you a question. What has happened in the book of Hebrew? Accident? Has it happened? Fire has happened? Disaster has happened? Nobody died? To show that God is chastening them? None of them has happened. Paul simply wrote certain things to them. And he noticed that what he wrote to them would get them offended. Because he was trying to correct them. So he was saying that what I wrote to you. He called it the chastening of the Lord. Because they had long time beliefs about certain things. What did they believe? You know, when you get back home, I want to give you an assignment. Go and read the book of Hebrews. You will understand what he was saying because he's getting to the conclusion right now. He was telling them, he says, God, at Sunday times, spoke to us by the fathers. Who he spoke to us by the father. He said, at this last time, he's speaking also to us by the son. Who has made what the ear of all things. You know what he's saying? He's saying, all that God spoke to the fathers. And all the elders, all those ones, they are no longer relevant. What God is speaking to us right now is what is speaking to us by the Son. So, all this bragging, we have Abraham as our father, Jacob as our father, we are the descendants of Isaac. He said it's nothing in the light of what Christ has done. So, they got offended. So, he has knocked out the fathers. The next thing, he took on Moses. He said, you'll be talking about Moses. He said, Moses is a servant in the house. He said, meanwhile, Christ is the son over his house. 
And he said, the son abides in the house forever, but the servant does not. He says, Moses will talk about is just a servant in the house, but Jesus Christ is the son over his own house. And he said, whose house we are? So he came after Moses, knocked out, knocked him out. He says, you are talking about the, about the temple that you built. We go to the temple. We go to a place of worship. He said, what are you talking about? He said, even when Moses was told to build the temple, God told him to build after the pattern what he saw in heaven. He said, what you saw right now is a fake temple. So that's the original temple. We are our high priest, Jesus Christ himself, serves. He says, what you are doing is fake. He knocked out their temple. Then he went after their high priest. He said, your high priest is fake. He said, you know why? Because your high priest is changed year after year. Because they die. They cannot continue by reason of death. He said, but this high priest remain high priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. So the high priest, that don't worry. They, they will soon offer something. The high priest was knocked out. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? Then the next day, he went after the abuse and the cows that they offered. He says, all oh, this that's being offered, he says, if it is possible for them to wipe away sins, they will have been taught to be offered year by year. So because they are incompetent, therefore God gave us the blood of his son. So all the abuse and everything again, knocked out. Everything totally wiped out. What do they believe? Everything that they were hanging on for their salvation, the man knocked it out. He now came after them, don't be angry. And your discipline. And your chastening. And your correction. How will you feel? Somebody, t- after you spend five years in university, say the course you are, you study is useless. You need to go for a training. You may be offended, but it will be better for you to listen to that correction. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? So when we're talking about discipline, is number one discipline is the word. God will use his word to knock out everything that you believe. He will use his word to correct everything that you believe. I can go on to tell you many things that he knocked out of their lives. Hallelujah. The Bible says from childhood, we have known the Holy Scriptures that are able to make you wise on salvation. The Bible says you must give heed to the Scriptures. The Bible says that a man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. I, think that's, I can't remember where that is. I think that's in the book of Timothy, maybe the first, first Timothy or something. Uh, who knows that place? I want to read it. That place that talks about uh, the word of God. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, would that be 315 or something? Eh? 15 and 3, first, second Timothy, right? Or first? Everybody just grumbly. Look for it that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. Yeah, I need it. That's the primary way God corrects his children is by his word. What furnishes you is the word of God. Spend time in the word. Oh my God, I wish I can go on with that. Second Timothy what? 3.17. Okay, start from 15. Okay, Second Timothy 3 from verse 15. Let me read from there. I just always around that place. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me take five minutes. Yeah, it says, and from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you what? Wise for salvation. Come for them, let them go back, go back. God bless you, go back. Thank you. Which are able to make you wise through faith that's in Jesus Christ. Okay? Go on. Verse 16. Like, look at what it says. And all scripture is given by what? By the inspiration of God. And is what? Profitable for doctrine. Do you see that? The word of God is profitable for what? For doctrine. For reproof. For correction. And for what? Instruction in righteousness. Number 17. That word that the man of God may be what? Complete, my God. Thoroughly what? A key for every good work. So what prepares you and, make you and makes you complete is the word of God. That's what furnishes you for every good work. Say amen to that. Amen. Can I ask you at this point, how many times do you spend in the word? Do you know what Jesus, Jesus said? He said, sanctify them with your truth. That word is truth. Do you know if you spend time in the word, there are certain habits that will just drop off you. Instead of shouting at Tottenham, and, 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 and ask now. If you spend one hour in the world every day, one hour in the world every day, you, your life will transform radically. Honestly, let me challenge you guys. 
All this time you look for, time, all this time you spend running at task looking for business. If you wake up in the morning and pray and read your Bible, you I can bet you that something will arise in the day. Before you know it, what you have read will prepare you for the answer. You will not do foolish. The Bible says the word of God is able to make you what? Wise. There will be a response from you that everybody will know why. This guy is wise. It's not that she's wise because there's a word that is wise in you. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? Spend time, you'll be shocked. A lot of you struggle with habit and you are, I'm determined. I swear. Everything I told you in this church, I can't remember maybe three weeks ago or four weeks ago, that when it comes to repentance, eh, just repent and tell God I am sorry. Don't make promises. When you want to, just tell God, I'm sorry, don't make promises. Because when you make promises, God will allow you to fulfill that promise in your own strength. God, I promise you, that will be the last stout I will drink. I know you are lying. Because as we are talking right now, there are many in your fridge. Let's go. <laughs> Father, that will be the last stout I will drink. Father, oh, oh, you just touch again. Father, I promise you. I would not do it again. Honestly, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I promise you, if I do it again, kill me. Listen. Just repent and receive grace. All those promises don't work. You'll be sober for two months. Then all of a sudden, another talking will walk past. The son of man. He will resist again there after some time. He said, God understands. <laughs> what you do? What you do? Spend time in the world. Before you know it, your desire will change. Before you know it, look. Where is that young? I say, uh, um, where is treasure? Okay, I saw um, miracle come. Come with your jacket. You dress, you dress, you dance well, man. You can move your body. Be body. Eh? Be body, be body. Me, I can't be body like you. You, you, you. you dance well. Let me look for someone that is also blessed in the church. All of you are so small in choir. You are not being properly fed. Please, marry now. You, since you marry, you have not changed you. Becky! What are you doing to this young man? His body has not changed. I should give him time. Okay. Because you know some guests are very wicked. Uh, yeah. They will give you with right hand and collect with left hand. They will feed you in the day, in the night. They will collect everything. Okay. I'm, we are each father. I forgive, forgive me. I will not say it again. I promise you. If I say it again, bless me. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Does this look nice on him? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. My brother, God bless you. Yeah, you. I've been in your church at uh, the end of the month or so. Uh, I've been in your line of the month. Here I come. Yeah. Are they the same size? The Bible said, desire what? Sincere make of the world, that you may grow. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Let's assume that these are bad habits, but it fits perfectly on him. As you grow, as you feed on the world, now you grow. Remove your jacket. These are bad habits. It fits him perfectly at this, at this level. Right? Fitted. Nice. Wear it. Remove this one. Try. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Has the jacket reduced its size? No. Has the power of sin reduced? No. What happened? You have grown more than it. Yeah. That's how you break it. So that is why the discipline of God it comes for by feeding. See, when the child begins to eat rice, half of that rice will be on the floor. Yes. 
Then half of it will be on his face. He's still eating rice. Let that boy continue to eat that rice. In next, next year, you will have five grains on the floor or ten. Then later, everything will enter his stomach, including the plate. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? It will not just finish that rice, it will ask for more rice. Yeah. What happened? Not yet, the boy has just growing capacity. Just keep increasing your capacity. Yeah, Are you hearing me? Yeah. Keep hearing the word. Keep coming. Keep hearing. Keep listening. Before you know it, you begin to say the things I used to do. I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. All the bad, bad drinks I used to drink, I drink them no more. That's a great change. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? It's a process. You don't slap a child, you don't have beard. Keep feeding him. Before you know it, it will be, it will be good every Saturday to go out, even every day to shave. You know what happened? He has grown. You can say, I don't have enough Christian character. I don't have enough righteousness. Keep growing. Before you know it, your righteousness will so grow that it becomes infectious on others. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? That's why Bible encourages us to be patient with one another. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? I, 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 my brother, we were talking about, we went for a walk and we were just for a walk and we were just sharing something very powerful. You know, a lot of people think that you have changed. They are why? I'm a good Christian. You are not, no, yeah, that's what, what I was telling you yesterday. You say, yeah, I was a good, you are not really a good Christian. No. You are not really a good Christian. You think you are good, you are judgmental, eh? You know why you are judgmental? Because naturally you are good. Before you gave your life to Christ, you are a nice person. You don't drink. You don't womanize, you don't mind nice. You don't do anything. You are a good person, naturally. You don't quarrel. So when you got, became born again, you are now being nice. You think that it's because you have changed. There's the, the, somebody that was an arm robber before. Who was doing drugs. And a court member. Right now you come to church, somebody offends himself. Oh, pastor, here. If not for pastor, I would have slapped you. You said, that boy, he has no Christian character at all. You, are, you don't know where he came from. There has been a big change. You are judging it because you are a good person before. There has been a change. Are you hearing me? There has been a change. There has been a change. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? The defeat, Bible says, it shall come to pass in those days that the yoke shall be taken off your neck. And the yoke shall be broken up because, because of the anointing. The word of the anointing there is not the word anointing. It shall be broken because of fatness. In the original, it says it shall be broken because of what? Fatness. As you grow, all those things you call yoke and bodies, they will be taken off your neck. By the reason of what? Fatness. May you grow fat in Jesus' name. Do you get what we are talking Ah, no. Yeah. Hallelujah. No, come, 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 come. You wear this. Wear this. Yeah. <laughs> Does it look nice on him? Does it look nice on him? That's what we are trying to say. See, that's the way you grow. That's the way your size is. There's something is put on you. Doesn't look nice on you again. Do you get what we are trying to say? May everything that they want to put on you, may they never look nice on you again. That's what we are trying to say. It's not meant for you. Glory be to God. Give him back his jacket. Let everybody bear their own body. <laughs> Glory be to God. So you can see how Paul used the word of God to arrange, to discipline them. And then he took all those things out to introduce Christ to them. Do you get what I'm trying to say now? So the primary way God disciplines you is through his word. Glory be to God. Let me now tell you number two way. And then we'll close for today. Number two is through circumstances. Um, and let me quickly go on now. Let me tell you number three. Number three, true people. Yeah, those are the three ways. Number two, circumstances. Number three, people. My God. You thought you were patient. May God send somebody to your life. <laughs> they will stretch your patience to its limits. I've asked you one question before in this church. 
many years ago. Please, let me have this two chair, uh, lady, bring the second chair. Let her bring it. Don't help these women, let them walk. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is wrong with she brought it now? <laughs> and if your wife had told me that you not help her, look at your life. But you are a good man, know you. You are a good guy. You are a very good guy. But Mr. Ifa is a good guy. <laughs> Listen to me, guys. Can you see these two chairs everywhere? You can't see it. Let's go on stage. I didn't eat this money, so help me. Okay? Thank you. In fact, I'm not going to explain circumstances I've told you before. God will block you. He will create circumstances around you that I, I hey, there's a little book I just, uh, not a book, I, I, I did a chapter, a contribution uh, for a sister over there for, for a book. I just share my experience, just in a nutshell there and everything. Ah, sometimes in life, you know, some, some of us, we are so protected. Because when you have big sisters and you are about to second to the last born, everybody protects you. Your sweater, your cardigan, everything. As that master's, after I my master, I was still staying out. I was working, I was at a top officer in road safety. I was still living at home. Then when God began to knock everything under my feet, I survived. Some of you think that Pastor T is tough. It's toughness I learned after those things were removed. Even when God wants to toughen you, he knows how to do it. It will bring circumstances your way. Sometimes you will eat breakfast. You don't know how you're going to eat lunch. Sometimes you will wake up in a house in the morning. You don't know when you're going to allow you to sleep in that house in the evening. You are constantly on the edge believing God. Right now, they have to remind me to take my post when I'm leaving the house. I'm used to not having money. Believe me. I'm used to not having money. More than used to having money. God, believe me. I can I don't even, when I don't have money, I don't remember I don't have money. My joy is the same. I've been broke enough you know, that broke is permanent. I don't. I don't, nothing, I'm, I'm not joking, no. I'm used to it. But some of you right now, if your account is going down, sorrow will hit you. You say, I'm up to 1.5 million, but you'll be afraid. Hey, this money is going down, 1.5 million. Me, you have 1.5 million. Hey, yeah, yeah. What are we pointing at? You surprise you. <laughs> are you pointing at Lexus? The victims. Pointing. Are you hearing me? Pointing at a house. 500 million, over 1.5 million. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to it. This day, when they say, what do you want to eat? Ask Derek. It's one of the most difficult things for me to answer. Because my intestine can digest too. We have eaten, we have eaten all. Everything is interesting to me. Gary is interesting to me. Gary and coconut is interesting to me. Gary and granite is interesting to me. Kosh and dosh. You know what I'm talking about? Koshe, kose and, and doya. They are, into, they are very interesting to me. Doya with ordinary pepper is interesting to me. When we are getting to just you know that run about. Before you get to where they sell uh, that thing, I must stop there to pay daily ritual. <laughs> because we are, we, are, we, we are used to it. So it's you people that we are, we are used to it. We are, God will bring things away that will discipline you. That is why Paul said, I've learned to abase and I know how to abound. May God discipline you. But in discipline, may he show you mercy. Amen. Kai, I love this service. I love it. Honestly. Let me round up. On people. Let me ask you a question. If this is 400 kilograms hmm, of stone, oh no, that's too heavy, you can't carry it. Let me say this is, a, this is 50 kilograms of stone, of stones, right? And this is 50 kilograms of gold. Which one is heavier? Which one is heavier? Eh? Some people say stone. But I gave you a clue. I said, if this, is, if this is 50 kilogram of stone and this is 50 kilogram of, of gold, which one is heavier? They are the same. You know, in life, the first thing that God will send to you is the stone. Because that which comes first is the flesh before the spirit. That is why, although God wanted David on the throne, he sent to him 400 broke men. Busted, discarded men. 
frustrated me, 400. It's supposed to be rainy, but gave him all the stones. If you can walk with your stone and carry it successfully, you will carry the gold successfully. Because the, the same energy to carry the stone, the same energy to carry the gold. Gold is coming, but you carry gold, you carry stone first. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? That's why God will send some people your way. You get your, you, you got a, your first job. Your, your boss is very tough. You know, it's intolerant. Come on, so, so, so. he talks to you roughly. He talks to you roughly. You can't stick it. Stick it. Don't always stick it, stock it. Don't always stock it, stock it, stock it, and stuck in it. Are you hearing me? He's training you. Hey, see, everybody's silent now. See, see, see them. Everybody's silent. Dr. Seko, beg them. They're all silent now. They're not answering me. You get a job as a driver. You are quarreling with your boss. Say, park the car there at the concert of the house. Why did you park the car there? But you told me to park the car there. Can't you use your own sense? If you tell you to park it there, can't you use your sense to park it in a better place? And you throw the key at him. Nonsense. You have not learned. You will go around the circle one more time. You will go around that circle one more time. May your present marriage be the last marriage. If you don't learn all those things, you will marry again and again. You could not learn some things. It's to the glory of a man to overlook offenses. I told you in this church, you fall in love by looking, you continue to stay in love by overlooking. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? That's how it works. The same energy. You can't tolerate anything. God will send you people that will stretch you he will send you a boss that will demand what you cannot give. That's what forces to depend on the grace of God to help you to make to meet that supply, that demand. Do you get what we are trying to say today right now? So don't look at them. Look, they are, look when, you, when God sends you such people, they are God's agents. Yes, they are God's messengers yes, to train you for your next level. Yes, wow. Why did you think that there was no... The only time that David mistakenly did it, he repented and repented. He never walked against anybody under him because he understood what it means for your master to walk against you. Because Saul walked against him, true spear at him. He learned it. That you don't do that. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? Once you have been through it, you have learned it. So, brothers and sisters, when it's time for you to carry your stones, carry it. Don't despise it. Don't walk against it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and I round up. Hope you got something in this service today. Honestly, I believe this service has prepared somebody for their next level. I believe for your next level. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Can I say this to some of you? Hmm? Please, hmm? take this from me. This is prophetic. Hmm? If people can offend you and you refuse to take vengeance, when well, you have the capacity to do so, you have learned something. That's right. yeah. If you still want to get evil over what people did to you, you are still a babe. You are still a babe. You have not learned your lessons. Kai. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at what it says here. Therefore, since we are what? Surrounded by what? By so great what? A cloud of witnesses. When Bible talking about cloud of witnesses, not talking about this one. No. Just, if you go back to chapter 11, it, was, it just talk about David, about all these great men of faith. Right? Bible called them cloud of what? Of witnesses. People are the cloud of witnesses. Bible says we are surrounded by people. Let us therefore what? lay aside every weight and everything that easily what? Ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is what? Set before us. The next line. Looking what? Unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endure what? The cross. The spice was the shame. And sat down at the right hand of the throne. This is how you survive discipline. You keep, that's number four. Write it down. You skip the joy ahead of you as your focus. Wow. 
you know that when I survive this, I'm going to the throne of glory. So all the shame that comes, all the pains that comes, he will endure. Knowing that a throne of glory is set in front of you. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? Why do you read so hard for exam? Because you know when the past comes, you'll forget the pain. A woman goes to the labor room with all the shouts. Once she comes out, she forgets the pain for the joy that the woman, a, a man is born. Before you know it, she's getting ready for another one. What is happening? Because, she has, because of the joy that is in her hand. May all this pain you have gone through in your life, may they not be for nothing. Amen. By the reason of your testimony, may the name of the Lord in your life be glorified. Amen. Use your stone to, throw, to train for your good. Do you get what I'm trying to say now? People have sent them your way. There are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are people around you. I call them stone people. Heavy to carry. Their involvement in your life is like a body, but they endure. Learn how to work with them. Before you know it, your capacity has increased. And before you know it, you get to where you are going. Yeah. It's like a man that God told, if you can push down this wall, you get to where you are going. And he kept pushing the wall, pushing the wall. He couldn't push the wall. Three, four years, he was still pushing. He couldn't get through to the other side. He came, he came to God. You told me to push this word. I'm a miracle to the other side. I've been pushing for three years. Nothing has happened. God said, look at your biceps. He checked the bicep. Look at it. Look at the muscles now. Everything has worked. He's been developed right now. It's never about the world. It's about you. Complete, entire, lacking nothing. Because you are already well furnished for every good work. God bless and keep you. Cause his faith to shine upon you. Cause his faith to rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor I will get there. I will get there. No, no, you didn't say very well. Tell your other neighbor I will get there. Yes. What I'm going through cannot stop me. Yes, yes. Pastor DJ, yes. I will yes. get there. Yes. The circumstances that surround me cannot stop me. I will get there. People are planning against me cannot stop me. I will get there. I will get there. May everyone who has worked against you, may they regret it. May they regret it. Give me the power, give me the power on the handheld. May they regret it. May everyone who gossip about you, who wrote against you, who worked against you, may they regret it. How we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And we know. Tell your neighbor I know. No, no, that's, that's we Tell your neighbor I know. That all things are working together. For my good, we know. That sack is working for my good. When you threw me out of your house, it's working for my good. That visa denier is working for my good. Because in the plan of God, nothing is working against me. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? I'm happy the service went this way today. I believe somebody must have prayed. We have all prayed and we went the way we went. But I believe you got something here today. Hallelujah. Let's round up today by praying our normal prayer. Do you understand, do you, do you understand what we are trying to say today at all? No, you are always afraid. When money is going down in your pocket, you are scared. Don't be scared. Maybe that's time for you to learn how to live by faith. Don't be scared. It will take care of you. Money will not take care of you. It's God that will take care of you. You know where I always pray for myself? I always pray some things. I say, God, I don't want to have any problem that money cannot. You, are you hearing me? Because all oh, this is trusting money, trusting money. The day the one that money cannot so we handle you. You know what Bible text those who are rich? He said there to give out a lot of money so that they will lend the time for money for the financial time to come. So they will learn to trust God and not to trust in uncertain riches. Not to trust in uncertain riches. Kai, my sisters, don't be all this thing rushing. Uh, he must have money, must have, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know, cars. Uh, let me follow Pastor DJ Bugatti. He must have all these things. Look, can you find a man who believes God? Eh, Buki, find a man that told you believe God together. And Bible says, if two of you shall agree on that as touching anything, 
I told you in this church that godliness is profitable. That if two of you can work together in a godly way, God will. I've never seen I've been young now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaking nor is it begging bread. Me? Last year I gave over 50 suits. Last year. Me? I'm giving out car. Me? You don't understand though. We work out for this road. So even the road knows also. That we go push you, the shoe will start going by itself. If God knows where we are going. You don't understand. But you see, we thank God. We praise God. I didn't plan myself out of it. I just follow God out of it. It's one of the chapters I wrote for my sister. There. I told, look, don't, when you are going through it, begin to make plan. You will plan yourself out of, the, out of the will of God. You think you are so smart. It's not in the power of God, of power of man to order his own steps. What has become of all your plans that you have been making all these years? Why don't you trust God? I like to take you out. Follow him a day at a time. Before you know you get to where you are going. Kai. Today is a good day. It's a good day. Glory be to God. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not to trust in certain riches, but what in living God who gives us what? Richly all things to do what? To enjoy. It's God that gives us things richly to enjoy, not money. Don't trust in that. We thank God for the money, but we trust in God. Don't let money change your, change your character. Change who you are. Still maintain your friends. Because it could have been them anyway. Who have the money and you are the, you are the broke one. Now that God has elevated you, don't ignore, ignore them. Be there for them. You are the angel of God in their life. You are the hand that God wants to reach, use to reach them. Could be your minute, could, that could just be your purpose. That because you bless them, they will bless their own children. And their children will go to school because you bless their father. Haba. What is more than that? There are people that will tell you, thank you in heaven. You don't know what you did to them. Yes, but somehow, eternity has recorded what you did. Yeah. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? Yeah. Let us look beyond these mundane things and look at the purpose of God. Yeah. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Deuteronomy 33, verse 7. And we pray and we are out. Deuteronomy 33, verse 7. Ooh, thank you, Father. And this is said of Judah. <laughs> when we finish, when we finish praying, we will sing a song. Daily as I live, often as I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. <laughs> Let us pray and we, we sing. You want to, I don't want my life to be an expression of struggle. I don't want my life to even be an expression of my connection. I want to be an expression of God's grace. And this is said of Judah. Hear Lord, the voice of Judah. I pray for you. Bible says, oh you God that answer their prayers. Psalm 65. Unto which our flesh come. May you have speedy answers. The request you have written down for this year, the Lord will answer you speedily. Amen. You will have one testimony after the other. He said, Hear, O Lord, the voice of Judah. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. May He hear you in the day of peace. May He hear you in times when you are in need. May He hear you even when you are weak. May He hear you in the day you fast. May He hear you. In the days you can't fast, may he hear you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hear, oh Lord, the voice of Judah. And bring him to his people. I pray for you. God will bring you to people he has ordained for you. Did you hear me? I said God bring, you to, bring to you your own people. People he has written for you before the foundation of the earth. May he bring them your way. 
in the name of Jesus. Everyone you need to fulfill your purpose. Ordain to one with you. I call everyone on to your life. May they show up at the right time. In the name of Jesus. At the right season. For the right purpose. May they show up for you. In the name of Jesus. Those who need to approve your letter, we call them in. Those who need to help you technically, we call them in. Those who need to introduce you, we call them in. In the name of Jesus. For those of you who are new in the city of Abuja, those who need to give you accommodation, I call them to your life. Those who need to give you money for where you are going, I call them to your life in the name of Jesus. Those who need to give you that job to start your life, I call them in Jesus' name. Those who need to give your capital to start your business, I call them into your life in the name of Jesus. He says, oh Lord, hear the voice of Judah. Hear the voice of DJ. Hear the voice of Bros. J. Hear the voice of Enoch. Hear the voice of Uga. Hear the voice of Mitty. Hear the voice of Togba. Hear the voice of Eden. Hear the voice of Eden. Hear the voice of Victor. Hear the voice of Idilizu. Hear their voice, oh Lord. Bring them to their people. In the name of Jesus. Hear the voice of Stevie. Hear the voice of Leko. In the name of Jesus. Hear the voice of Victor Ndache. Hear the voice of my sister. In the name of Jesus. Hear the voice of Judah. Hear the voice of Hugo. Hear the voice of Levi. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring it to his people. God will bring to your people. Amen. There are people that will be ordained to work for, with you for the foundation of the earth. Yes. God will bring you to them. Amen. When you work with the wrong people, you can be very painful. Amen. I pray for you. Amen. God will bring to your people. Amen. Don't be offended when people don't like you. They are not your people. Amen. Those are your people, they will love you, but not because of what you did or what you didn't do. Because God has opened their heart to love you. Love is not a return for bribe. It's God ordained. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? May God be to your own people. Amen. My sister, God will be to the right husband. Amen. The right person. That's not the it's not when you are joined to the wrong person. You will do and do and do try to impress and you will not be impressed. I rebuke that in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you. God will be to your own people. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says, let his hand be sufficient for him. Amen. Amen. I say in this church, Amen. Amen. none of you is a dependent anymore. Amen. I command the anointing of sufficiency Amen. to come over your life. I command the anointing of sufficiency to come over your life. I command the anointing of sufficiency to come over your life. Amen. Financial sufficiency. Mental sufficiency. Material sufficiency, spiritual sufficiency, accommodation sufficiency. It comes over your life in the name of Jesus. May his hand be sufficient for him in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not look to any man before you eat. Amen. Your children will not look to any man before they eat. Your children, children will not look to any man before they eat. In the name of Jesus. May the portion of the righteous be your portion. I command double portion to rest upon you. Double upon you. Double portion upon you. I command favor of God to rest upon you afresh. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your hand will be sufficient for you. In the name of Jesus. I have been studying the book of, of Numbers. Every time they took census. The greatest number was, in, was the house of Judah. The greatest number. The greatest number was the house of Judah. One day I will teach you the grace involved. When God gives me the permission. But I pray for you. When census is taking your family. Because you belong to this tribe. When census is taking your family. When they are counting properties, counting houses, counting breakthroughs, counting how well your children are doing. Ah, may you rank very high.
May you rise very, very high. May you rise very high. May you rise very high. In the name of Jesus. May you rise very high. In the name of Jesus. May you rise very high. In the name of Jesus. May you rise very high. May you rise very, very high. In the name of Jesus. You run very high. When census be taken, finances in the family, you run very high. Do you hear what I'm talking about right now? No man will forget you. Hear, O oh Lord, the voice of Judah. He said, Let him be united to his people. Do you know what he said? He said, May his hand be sufficient for him. Let me take that prayer to the next level. If your need is 100 million, may your hand be sufficient for you. If what you need is 200 million, may your hand be sufficient for you. If what you need is 2 billion, may your hand be sufficient for you. If what you need is 3 billion, may your hand be sufficient for you. If what you need is 10 billion, may your hand be sufficient for you. If what you need is 15 billion, may your hand be sufficient for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He just said, his hand, he didn't mention the figure. He said, may his hand be sufficient for him. Whatever be the need, whatever be the project, I pray for you. May your hand be sufficient for you. You will not look to any man to get married. You will not look to any man to pay your rent. You will not look to any man to pay your children's school fees. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will not. Your hand be sufficient for you. Kai, something is happening here. Listen to me. How many of you will likely go to ministry in the future? You will likely go into the ministry. I pray for sufficiency. In the name of Jesus. May sufficiency rest upon you. You will not be at the mercy of any man. Anybody born of you will never be at the mercy of any man. He said, may his hand be sufficient for him. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are wondering, why was it that the temple was not built during the time of Saul? It cannot be possible. It's, the tribe, it's from the tribe of Benjamin. It's a revenue wolf. It cannot happen. It can only happen during the time of somebody who is from the tribe of Judah. Because there is sufficiency. That's where the anointing rests. So when it was time for them to build, there was sufficiency. Because David was from the tribe of Judah. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? Have you wondered why the richest king is from the tribe of Judah? Solomon? He's the same anointing, sufficiency. Do you get what we are talking about right now? May he rest upon you. Amen. Sister Lydia, may he rest upon you. Amen. Fumi, may he rest upon you. Amen. Daddy, may he rest upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And the last prayer point there. I says, and may you, that is God, be a help against his enemies. As the Lord blesses you, any man that will rise against you, may the Lord be your help against them. As the Lord promotes you, any man that will rise to fight in your prosperity, may the Lord become an enemy to them. May the Lord defend you. May the Lord protect you. You will not be cut short in the midst of our prosperity. You have labored. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. You will be here for a very long time, my sister. You will be here for a very long time. No man shall be able to take your life out. The Lord will be a help for you against your enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, may you be a help against his enemies. Let them gather. Let them plan. May the Lord be a help for you Amen. against your enemies. Amen. When they sit in that board meeting, may the Lord share that meeting. Amen. 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 I hear reversal. I hear reversal in my spirit. Hallelujah. The enemy has planned that he will go this way. 
but the Lord will reverse it. No shame. No shame. No shame. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and just bless the Lord as well. We finish for today.